Good morning, everyone. After some deliberation and uh, many requests, uh, I'm going to put together some, I'm going to order, the next order of Signum 3.1s uh, will be in black. So, I'm going to make some labeling tweaks to it, uh, but it's going to be pretty much the exact same. Uh, I might add some some pad parts to it for adding a Pomodoro, Pomodoro timer to it. Uh, I'm not quite sure. It probably wouldn't take that long, but I'm, I tend not to... I try not to mess around with things once they're working and good. Um, and the next version is like Signum 4 or something that would incorporate all these features. So this seems like a kind of an interesting half measure, half step something to try out, um, especially since I'll be making modifications. Yeah, it's, it's actually a really good idea. <clears throat> this is good. <laughs> this is why we talk about this. So part of the reason why I don't like to um, change the colors or change things up is it does confuse uh, support and sales, kind of. People see a keyboard and say, ah, that's that Signum. It's a black one. I'll buy that one and then they see it on Mech Market or something and they buy it. And it's a Signum 3.1, but it's the black one, so they figured that was the same one, but it's not. So, kind of differentiating between the products. Uh, this is a, a, uh, a mistake I made in labeling them both Signum 3 and then Signum 3.1. Or Signum 3, <laughs> I mean, technically it was Signum 3, and then it was Signum 3.0, and then it was Signum 3.1, uh, these are all bad naming conventions. Maybe I need code names for them. <laughs> um, actually, a code name is not a bad idea. I just need to have a, like a random code name generator, so I can get one that's like Jellyfish Wildcat or something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> otherwise, I'll I'll get stuck with it and I'll be like, ah, I gotta figure out a good one. Uh, that one's pretty good, but it's not it's not quite as good as I would want want it to be. Uh, so uh, the potential for making some tweaks to the design, because the technically the 3.1 design is an earlier design than the 3.0, and it doesn't support some of the features that the 3.0 does. So it could use the 3.1 could use a little bit of updating. Um, obviously, the 3.0 sells way better, uh, so I, I would be I'm much less likely to make changes there. So, but you know, changes to color is not really that big of a deal. I don't know. Anyways. I'll be making some uh, Signal 3.1 black versions, and uh, those will be coming up soon. I'll also have, in case anyone is interested, which I'm not sure anyone is, uh, the Vexus PCB will be at a point where I can, where it actually makes sense to make one, and you don't have to do a whole bunch of shorts and cut lines and change things around in order to get it working, um, which will be pretty cool because. This is, it's a bit of a mess back here, <laughs> and it's a, it's somewhat concerning, uh, you know, I don't really expect it to be a problem, because the case, the case kind of covers it, but, you know, uh, I have like holes drilled in that one, in the prototype board, and there's, you know, lines cut, and short wires running around, so it's, it's very, it's very hacky, but the whole thing is kind of hacky anyways. I do need to come up with a new button set for it, or a new button kind of thing. Um, I would love to get the the whole uh, the board to sit lower in the PCB. I've actually thought about doing like reverse mount, which would be pretty cool, and take up space in the rear where there's going to be space anyways. Uh, but then I would need to redo all the covering and the th and the finger switches, the back, the trigger switches. I don't know. See, that, that'll that come later, I guess. First, getting a Vexus PCB that works well uh, with the ESP32 and has all the pull-ups that it needs because that was that was my that was a source of my troubles early on. That's still good. Very good. The battery life is you know, for the short battery, it's it's working, but I'd like it to have a larger battery if possible. I, I'm also fiddling around with the idea of uh, 3D printing 
enclosures for batteries so that you can swap them out. <clears throat> you would take the, the Vexus, if it's got low battery, you'd plug it in and then take out the battery pack and then put in another battery pack, which would just be a lithium uh, LiPo battery uh, that was already charged. And then you're good to go. Set the other battery pack to charge. Man, I look tired. Because uh, <clears throat> this is like... I, I could not fit the the speaker on this one on the signal on the on the Vexus light. There, there just wasn't a space to put it. And then the battery sticks out pretty far too. Even though it is a small battery, that still sticks out pretty far. Uh, but being able to mount those to the back would be this is a magnet. I just see if it works. Ah, close, close, pretty close. It sticks, but it, it slides. This is, this is what you came here to see, right? Ah, need more. Need more magnet. I got a, a small one, and I broke off a piece of it because I figured it would be too much. Uh, no, not enough. But once the magnet works, I'll be able to, you know, stick it to the brim of my hat or something. Right, so signums and stuff. Right, the yeah. So the uh, the idea of having the the Pomodoro timer. Uh, basically, if I'm making modifications to the board, uh, making it a different color will be important, and then I'll be able to update the label, the naming on it, and uh, I gotta update the project. Okay, that's not that bad. Okay. Yeah, I've been using this. Uh, I've been using KiCad 5 for one specific project just to kind of test it out and make sure that it's it's functional and it is functional. I have had crashes on it, but just, you know, save your work, lol. It's a computer. Uh, or it's an operating system, I should say. <laughs> the computer is not the problem. So Yeah, there, there's there is good features aside from just the uh, the the scripting console. There are good features that are useful, uh, very useful. So I think I'll be standardizing on that upgrade, which kind of stinks because it's a backport, and it makes more sense to upgrade my version of Debian from Buster. So. I don't have a box to test that out on, really. I have one box, but it's it's my wife's system, and if it's working well, I really shouldn't mess around with it. Um, right, so getting that upgraded, and yeah, I'd have to redo that project. The The other project that I've been working on is, is almost ready to publish or send to the, the PCB fabricators. <clears throat> so once that goes through, I'm going to uh, get some other PCBs at the same time. This is this is how you focus. Just very very brain such focus. This is why this is why you tune in. This is entertaining stuff. Is everyone entertained? Is everyone interested in interesting thoughts? It is kind of cool to listen to some of these lags uh, later because I, I forget about stuff and the vlag reminds me of the stuff and I get to revisit it. <clears throat> or even better, I get to, I, I hear myself talking about stuff like, ah, I don't even know how to do that or it would be cool if I could or if I knew how to and at this point I might know how to <laughs> or I can do it. It's like, oh, hello, useful. I did not know those neodymium magnets were so fragile, were uh, brittle. They're glued to the hard drive enclosures, but like I figured I could easily bend the hard drive enclosure away from the magnet, but it just it just cracked. I'll have to get a bigger one. I used that. That was those magnets were from a uh, from a small from a laptop hard drive, so. 
I didn't think I would have to go so big, but it seems that I do. <sighs> It'll be nice to have that Vexus working in a in a good way that I can retain it, hold on to it, and put it places. I get to notice uh, animals more. I talk about that in the, the hunting vlog. I get to see the birds. I get to see the animals. I see the detail, and uh, it's it's very interesting. Cause like, I wouldn't say that I'm a I'm I'm a bird watcher, but I am watching birds at this point. And I can see the difference in the birds, and I I know when I haven't seen a bird before. <laughs> So it's kind of cool. I took some pictures of a, of a couple interesting birds when I go out in the backyard and I see them. <laughs> I'll, I'll figure out how to look up what a bird is, what a bird's name is, so that I can call it correctly. It's just interesting though. Oh, lots of things are interesting. <sighs> a funny thing that happened in so in Kentucky uh, the governor made a mask mandate and he issued it as an executive order and uh, the mask mandate is of questionable legality it's you know it's a, it's an executive order based on the emergency powers granted to him by a specific Kentucky revised statute however uh, some of his previous mandates had been challenged by a circuit court judge and found uh, found to be uh, unconstitutional and or illegal and he issued a temporary restraining order and said all right yeah if you issue any more executive orders you got to do at least this thing and he didn't he issued another executive order and he didn't do the thing and a newspaper that is friendly to him released an article saying ah people say that this is illegal but it's not because it's not an executive order and i was like Really? And I look it up, and it is an executive order. And the idea that you publish a, a news story without, like, checking the absolute most basic facts... Of course, no one else checked it. I don't know what to think about some of this stuff. I don't know if to think about some of this stuff. 